In the last three episodes, we've seen how strong the evidence is against Lyle's millions of years. But we might ask, how did they ever become so firmly entrenched that geologists just won't let them go? Well, a very bright young man called Nicholas Steno, a Bible-believing Christian, wrote a book, Prodromus, in 1669. Now, you may remember from episode one that Francis Bacon introduced the scientific method in 1620, but it wasn't widely put into practice immediately. The universities of Europe had been under the influence of Greek proto-science for centuries. Aristotle's physics, consisting of ideas which seemed so reasonable that everybody accepted them, reigned supreme until people like Brahe and Galileo applied the scientific method. They did experiments to test those assertions and found that Aristotle's physics was totally wrong. In the Aristotle tradition, Steno proposed four principles of sedimentology, which seemed so reasonable that everybody accepted them. One, the principle of original horizontality. All layers of rock are deposited parallel to the horizon. Later, they may be deformed, so they form an angle with the horizon. The law of superposition. The deeper the rock layer, the older it is. When there are different layers of rock, provided there has been no deformation, the oldest layers at the bottom and the youngest at the top. Three, the principle of lateral continuity. Rock layers extend laterally in all directions. Where similar layers of rock are separated by, for example, a valley or an ocean, it can be assumed these rock layers were originally continuous. And four, the principle of cross-cutting relationships. Any geologic formation that cuts through another is the younger of the two features. Using these principles, geologists came up with a sequence of sedimentary rocks covering the whole earth called the geological column. This was only a theoretical construct since nowhere in the world are these rocks found in a continuous sequence. James Hutton proposed that all of the sediments had been laid down in conditions identical to those now found on the earth. This was accepted as another principle of sedimentology, again, without any experimental verification. In 1796, a British civil engineer, William Smith, proposed another principle, the principle of fauna succession. According to this principle, rock units were characterised by unique sets of fossils. These sets of fossils presumably represented the diversity of things living at the time the sediment was laid down. And according to Smith, the occurrence of fossils was independent of the lithology of the rock. Now, this is in conflict with Steno's principle of lateral continuity which would expect similar fossils in similar lithologies. But nobody seemed concerned that this conflict cried out for experimental resolution. And Charles Lyell continued with the geological column arguing that sediments are, and always have been, laid down at one-eighth of an inch each century. So we can work out the age of the sediments by measuring the thickness and dividing by one-eighth of an inch to get the number of centuries. So, for the hypothetical geological column built upon Steno's, Hutton's and Smith's untested principles, he found the total age for all of the sedimentary rocks, all the rocks deposited in water, to be 600 million years. Geology has accepted those millions of years, but it soon became obvious that Lyle's assertion of three millimetres a century was utterly wrong. It was predictable 
that the record of the rocks would not fit with Lyle's geology because it was deliberately concocted to deny the biblical flood. There are major events like great storms and earthquakes which lead to huge floods, mud flows and turbidity currents which bring large amounts of sediment into the sea and into the geological record. Geologists started doing sedimentation experiments. They modelled turbidity currents. They modelled successive flood events bringing in layer after layer of sediment. These experiments certainly show that Lyle's three millimetres a century is untenable. But there are two problems. Firstly, they tried to bring in a time interval between deposition events long enough to maintain Lyle's millions of years. But if there had really been vast ages between deposits, there would have been evidence of erosion and biological activity. And secondly, they assumed that the sediment is depositing into non-moving water. But the sea is almost always moving, especially when storms and earthquakes are causing huge inflows of sediment. Now, some of Steno's principles might hold for sediment settling in still water. But as we saw in episode 30, the geologists of the world accept that the Earth has been struck by a meteorite 200 kilometres in diameter. Calculations by experts on such impacts from Caltech show that it would have raised tidal waves at least three miles high travelling at about 750 kilometres an hour, enveloping the entire globe in 27 hours. Those waves would initially have eroded vast amounts of material, and after most of the energy had been dissipated in scouring the face of the earth, the material would have started to settle out in the gradually decreasing ocean currents. The experiments on turbidity currents flowing into still water tell us nothing about what would have happened to sediments settling out of gradually slowing ocean currents. In the 1980s, a French geologist called Guy Berthaud started doing critical experiments. He discovered that when mixtures of sand with different sized grains settle, in air or in water, the energy of the falling particles causes them to be sorted into layers after they have landed on the bottom. This refutes Steno's law of superposition. Berto found that these layers can form at angles of 30 degrees or more to the horizontal. This refutes Steno's horizontality principle. Berto then performed experiments with Professor Pierre Julian at the engineering department of Colorado State University where very large flumes allowed sedimentation in rapidly moving currents of water. These experiments showed that in moving water sediments are not laid down horizontally. They're laid down in the direction of the current. So at any moment, at the deposition front, the largest particles are being deposited while the smaller particles are being deposited on top of the larger particles a little upstream from the deposition front. They found that as the speed of the current was decreased, more layers formed above the layers already deposited, and all of the layers continued to extend in the direction of the flow. This wipes out the idea that the lower layers were laid down before the upper layers, and it not only wipes out Steno's principle, it also wipes out William Smith's principle of faunal succession, and the whole idea that the fossils can represent a time series. Accounts of Berto's experiments are published in some prestigious journals of science. There's also an excellent video, Fundamental Experiments on Stratification, by Pierre Julian and Guy Berto. One would think that this evidence alone is sufficient to wipe out the credibility of Lyle's millions of years. But geologists want 
to cling to them and bring up all sorts of arguments to try and get away from accepting the evidence. Let's look at some of them next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.